I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support the channel, please go check out the link in the description for some awesome TGS merch. Hey guys, welcome to TGS. Today we're gonna to be checking out the differences between the brand new 694 and the slightly older, but still up to date, 692. They're pitched very, very closely in price. Let's see if there is any differences and if there are, what they are and where they are. So, uh, without further ado, let's just do a quick overall comparison before we do into, go into specific components. Firstly, pads, identical. Wood grade, identical. And barrel technology, very, very similar. And I hesitate to say completely identical because they are slightly different. Not massively, but slightly different. Triggers, identical. Internal of the actions, very similar. Safety catches, Slightly different actually, slightly different design. Um, and apart from that, that's pretty much it. But you can see the, the way that these barrels lock in, the actual action itself, the way they lock is a 690 action. That's kind of where those similarities stop. So uh, without further ado, let's, let's start with the four ends. So we pull the 692 four end off and the 694 four end off. Let's have a look. So the first noticeable difference is the 694 four end is significantly tougher to get off. The four ends are completely different, I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, this is a one piece aluminium four end with a sprung loaded draw there, and that keeps your opening and closing tight, and it is adjustable as well, so you can take that out, replace it, and so on and so forth, to keep your gun perpetually tight. As you can see, and we're not gonna touch on it right now, but you've got very, very different four end loops on there. Weight wise, uh, the 694 is 244 grams and 692 is 252 grams, so it is actually heavier. If we look at balance point, they're, they're kind of similar, but the weight distribution in this, well, actually it does feel heavier. It's not a huge amount, but you can, it feels heavier than this does. Uh, there is less metal, but it is steel. The way the ejector mechanism looks and works uh, would appear to be very similar. However, the way these four ends attach couldn't be much more different. How this one goes long term, well there's only one way to find out and that's to, to wait and we'll review it in a few years time. Uh, both are put in with torxes as opposed to flat heads that you'll find in the 680s. And well they're just different aren't they? You have this push button in here that rocks there and it's really well engineered, you've got a little crossbar that keeps it in place. It shouldn't be an issue long term. However for those of you who like that classic Beretta latch, you're not going to be far wrong with the 692. My personal preference on the four ends probably goes into the 692 thing, but then that's tried and tested and that's just me all over. I quite like that. I like old stuff. I like the reliability that it brings to my mind more than the actual gun itself, although I'm sure this will be absolutely fine. It's new, isn't it? Uh, and new is exciting. Actual four end design, that 692 is clearly wider. In fact, is it clearly wider? Let's find out. The 694, 43 mil. And the 692, is 45 mil. But it looks a lot wider. I think the, the radius is probably just a little less subtle. There's a larger flat on the bottom. Checkering wise, you couldn't pick between them. In fact, the pattern is almost identical in the way that it's scribed around the outside there. It's nice, isn't it? Uh, you can see there's more taper on the front of this one. This is more bulbous. It's going to be a personal preference thing. This certainly looks sleeker, but I probably prefer the, the, the sort of classic look of that. But again, it's it's not going to affect the way it shoots, particularly it's just a personal preference thing. It does certainly look a lot wider than just a few mil. Anyway, that's by the by. Depth wise, 692, 52mm. They're identical depth, absolutely identical to the millimeter, which is amazing because it's just an optical illusion that it looks shallower and thinner when really it's a couple of millimeters. But it's much the same between the 692 and the 682. The 692 looks and feels big, but it is just a couple of mil. Uh, a couple of mil really does make all the difference, obviously. All right, four ends done, stock and action. As we said, the stock wood grade is the same. This is a little bit higher in the comb, but only by a couple of mil at heel. In reality, they're kind of similar. The first difference you'll notice, however, is that thickness in the blade of the comb there. There's a clear taper to the top here, it looks a lot more refined, whereas this is a lot more trap-esque. 
it has it serves a purpose however can sort of put counter cast on a gun if if not proper so you might require a little bit more cast on this you will with this this will suit certain faces better this will suit certain faces better and again it's not a case of one is better than the other but there is a certainly you can see there real difference in the way that 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 blade tapers out across the top this moves down very naturally into the grip you'll notice a really big palm swell here and on the 692 you only have a very very slight so a very slight palm swell, but it is there and it is nice, but this is a much more hand filling affair. That takes us on to the radius of the grip as well. And actually, if you get directly above here, you'll see, look at the difference between these two. It doesn't take a, a genius to notice that this is significantly more swept back and this has a upright to 90 degree turn in it. Both of those will shoot different things. You'll probably find this 692 is a lot more versatile. Look a little bit more stranglable. However, this is going to get your repeatability up massively. Your hand is stuck in pretty much one position, and that is a good thing sometimes. Both triggers are adjustable, so you can kind of you can form this to your hand a little easier, and you can sort of work your hand around that grip a lot easier. If you've got smaller hands, you're probably going to struggle a little bit more with the 694 because you can't choke up on it quite so nice. It just doesn't feel quite right. It really does guide your hand back down the grip quite a lot, which is nice. Um, it's not just the password side, the off side is slightly more raised as well, which gives a just a more meaty, beefy feeling to the 694 over the 692. Again, neither is good, neither is bad, it's just the way it is. Obviously the way the stock is designed is very different. You can see here you have that sweep, at sort of like the 725, and here you have the classic Beretta shape. The 694 is a complete anti-classic Beretta, and that's kind of what's beautiful about it in its own way. You'll notice on the top here you have your scallops on here and you have your flats on here. One thing you'll notice, certainly with that light bouncing off, is how the light will come off the top here, but actually is caught here, which leaves you with a fairly unexotic sight plane, which is good. You don't want any too, any light bouncing off too, too full a sight plane, and it does make that marginal difference. That, and it, I think it, it looks racy, man. I like it. Um, Safety catches. Safety catches differ slightly, as you can see. I don't think there's one that's going to be slightly better than the other or not. They are just different. Um, both are nice, both are tactile. I think the 692 one is probably a little bit more classic feel. Certainly a slower feeling profile, even if it is not. Whereas this suits the sport feel of this gun. It's a lot more engineered which is kind of the sort of the feeling of it, is that it's a very modern engineering feel gun, whereas this is a more classic safety catch. Um, is one better than the other? Nobody really will know. And I expect nobody really will care. <laughs> Top lever. Top lever externally is very different. On this, you have that very definitive right hand kink, and I expect the left hand version will have a left hand kink to it. Uh, it's full metal, there's no rubber. It was certainly an issue when these first came out, although it does have that kink to it, is that they've got that rubber, and that doesn't make one feel great for long-term use. It's clearly gonna come off and you're gonna have to replace it at some point. I do wonder whether it's going to be updatable to the 694 one later on, if that did wear out. Um, I'm led to believe that when we go inside here, we're gonna find some differences internally. So we'll find out, we'll answer that question. It's a much nicer looking unit, this. It's slimmer, it's sleeker. Um, suits the profile of the gun, certainly. I, I like it a lot. Um, certainly something I found when shooting 692s is that black. And it's not something you really pay attention to, but you do pick it up more than you do a silver because the silver blends in. I'm not saying I've not shot one of these with a silver, but by comparison to even the 691s or any other Beretta ever with a silver top lever, you notice that black top lever a little more. Not that it changes my shooting whatsoever, but it's just a comment. The 694 top lever is a millimetre and a half longer. It appears longer because it's thinner, um, but I don't think it's going to be any better or worse either way. It is just different. However, I think it will be better long term. I wasn't a fan of this rubber top lever. Again, looking at guns that are 20 years old, that's not going to fill me with joy when that top lever is perished. You know, this gun is only a year old and you can already see the marks on the rubberization. And again, it's a cheap part to replace, but your grandkids won't have to replace it. You know, it'll be nice to have this metal one in the long run. Uh, on the action itself, well, there's quite a bit of difference. A lot of that difference is aesthetic. As you can see, they've really gone away from that classic Beretta look because they're trying to try something different because, well, 
that's what gun makers do now. You need to sort of stand out in the market where there is increasingly lots and lots of guns and where increasingly cheaper guns are saying that they are better than expensive guns, which is not entirely true, certainly from a lot of the cheaper manufacturers. It's nice that they can produce something that looks different and looks modern so that your 692 doesn't look kind of the same as a 1979 6A6. Well, that's kind of fast cool, but that's the argument people give out. So it's nice to come out with something new. Anyway, very different looks. The width is the same, the depth is the same. In terms of weight of the stock and action, uh, the 694 weighed in at 1.95, which is £4.5, and the 692 weighed in at uh, one a kilo and 860 grams, which is £4.2. There you go, look, I'm catering for the entire world. How that balances out? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's pull these actions out of the stocks, look at the internals, and um, A, see if there's a difference, and B, weigh them. So stock weight, the 692 weighed in without weights, all the weights taken out at 829 grams and at five grams heavier at 834 grams, you have the 694. It is a little heavier. However, it's a particularly heavy bit of wood here on the 692 and a really nice bit of wood. Um, so that's kind of by the by and every gun will be slightly different given the density of the wood and the weight of the wood therein, uh, which is why it comes fitted with these so that you can make your gun balance nicely. I do feel like certainly with this bit of wood in the 32 inch version, I take these two 20 gram bits off, throw them away and put a couple of 40 gram bits on. I think that actually would probably make this gun just bring that weight back and suit it a little bit better. But that is the beauty of balancing weights, isn't it? Uh, both stocks are featuring the plastic bedding piece, if you like, and well, it's supposed to stop the stock taking too much of a harsh percussion, which it works and certainly a better idea than the 682. If you look in the backs of both of these, they're slightly different. So in this, you have the balancing weights in one hole, the stock bolt in the other, and in the other, you have a large milled out area that takes the weights. And this is how they managed to get this gun with that giant grip down to a very, very similar weight. Do I prefer this? Yeah, I think I do prefer this. Those weights just screw into the bottom there with a the Phillips head. And actually, I don't know, it just looks clean. It looks a little bit more purposeful than a, a hole drill for the, for the affair. So it's worth mentioning that not all 690s, unlike all 680s have a very the same screw in the top, all 690s are slightly different. So a 690 has a cross-headed one that's dropped in. A 692 has a Torx one that sits proud. You have a cutout here on your safety catch that rides over the top of it. And on this one, you have a recessed Torx head bit. So this is a beefed up version. Um, What's the best way to describe it? It is a substantially bigger screw with a substantially better makeup than the others. Unnecessary, but with the theory that you're gonna put a lot of rounds through this gun, it might have to come apart more often than others that you want a screw that's gonna take that and undoing and doing up many times. That is key change number one, an improvement change. An improvement. It is an improvement, right? Uh, even if it is slightly unnecessary. Uh, key change two, this is a standard locking nut for the top lever. It's a cross-headed thing uh, that screws in. It's not very exciting whatsoever. They have upgraded that, and that's actually a two-piece, so you have the, the, it's actually a nut, if you like, on the outside of a stem that connects the two together. On this, they've done away with that, and they've put a single quality Torx bit in there. Better, simpler, and actually allows for a much more robust cam system in there as well. Improvement? Yeah, definitely an improvement. Was there anything wrong with the old one? No, there was nothing wrong with the old one before everyone goes, well, they should have made it like that originally. There's nothing wrong with the old one. And again, it's probably unnecessary, but you know, so is putting up rated brakes on your car. But we do it because it's, why not? Why not have something better than what you need? Um, same with buying a 694, why not have something better than what uh, the majority of people need? It's cool. I do love that top lever. Sorry, I keep going back to that. The way it's actually produced and finished, it's very tactile, very nicely finished. And I like that a lot. Anyway, apart from that, the actual inner workings are standard 690 inner workings, which is essentially a 680 inner workings, compacted, improved, and um, simplified. I suppose it is simplified in a way, but certainly better made than a 680 action internally. Maybe, that's a controversial thing to say. Nothing wrong with 680 action either. It's just slightly different. Um, they can make the most of modern machining. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking. Let's put these back together and look at the barrels. Uh, before I move on, it's definitely worth mentioning the figures of the weights of the actions. The 694 
is nine grams heavier. Nine grams. Take that as you will. That's more, but not as much. They said it added an ounce in the middle, and I'm guessing that's because they removed the weight out the front, moved the weight forward in the stock, moved the weight slightly back in the forend, even though the balance point is kind of the same in the forend. But yeah, nine action grams. I think a lot of it's placebo when you pick it up, it feels heavier and bigger because of that palm swell, because of the action. And that weight does sit in the middle. But anyway, we'll get on to the conclusion in a minute. Barrels, and this unfortunately is not entirely a fair thing because the 692 barrels have changed. This is a year and a half old, and um, well, they've changed. They now have BFAST balance weights in the middle, um, and they are upgrade, updating their ejector system as well. So this ejector system is the same as they have in the 690, whereas the 692 tried having a special ejector system in that you could turn the ejectors off, which for certain clay shooting needs is pretty handy. So you can sort of just stick your finger in there and turn it so you can actually lock the ejectors off. Real clever. However, the O-rings on these little things broke a lot and people didn't like that. Um, and then they got all wobbly and, you know, it's just, I wouldn't say it's a bad idea, but perhaps people aren't used to looking after guns in that regard to have to change O-rings on, on those things. So they got rid of it and they've changed them over to more of the standard block type projector. And actually in the box comes with a tool to remove those, which is nice. Uh, the major changes, if you can just imagine there's a rib there that takes B-fast balance weights, will we'll be okay, comes in, well, the ejector, but it's not a new ejector, it's just the same ejector system as you get in the 690, or 691, sorry, uh, is this, the, the difference in four end loop. So on this, it's a very conventional loop uh, that connects through a very conventional fashion, and you have this sprung loaded thing here that presses on the back that pushes the for this potential action that gives you that tension. On this gun, it's very different. You have a front part here that connects with the front loop, and a back part here that connects with the back bit loop here and actually as you can see it's just a standard roller that rolls around this adjustable interchangeable lump here. Very interesting. It's supposed to keep the gun more consistently tight over time uh, with less bollocks. You know when they first brought this out I did think mm, there's a spring in it and mm, it's gonna feel tense and stuff and there is downsides to that. Um, certainly in the fact that it takes a bit of effort to get it on and off and you're always fighting against that spring so it's less conventional gun making which I'm not against, it's just different. Um, and certainly the ones that I've seen that have fired a lot, a lot of rounds are still feeling tight, which is, is nice. You don't get that 682 flop, bang, um, which all the old 682s had after you give them a good hammering. Not that other, any other brand is any different after you give it a good hammering, but that cured that. It's gonna be interesting how this system operates in the long run. The whole aluminum forend I was kind of opposed to, but actually has held up really well and doesn't make a damn difference. The steel forend, well, we're gonna see. Yeah, I like the idea of steel because it should last longer and operate better and all this kind of thing. Um, jury's out. I'm sure it's good, but for now, it's still taking a huge amount of closure. It's gonna be interesting to see how they feel in the long run. And apart from that, let's put them together and sort of talk about the romantic side of the gun. So for the forend conversation, this one here pulls off. So you just feel that tension binding off there and then putting it back on. You have that same build of tension and that just looks in place. Whereas with the 694, um, well, this is new, so it's not entirely fair, but I've played with a lot of 68, 690s and they are different. Goes on really nicely. To go off, it does take quite a, a shove to get it around that curve. Again, it's gonna be interesting how they operate in the long term, but it is positive and it is nice. And once it's on there, it really is on there. I like it a lot. And it does appear slimmer, even if it's not. So how do they compare? Well, the 692 is a great gun. That forend, it was great, nice big forend, slimish grip, hugely versatile gun. Screen back to the 682 Goldie, which obviously it was kind of designed to replace, and felt great. You know, it was an extremely versatile sporter, but it was not making anything new or exciting. It was a, I say it's not even a redesign. It was a, a variation on a theme. This 694 is different it's nice to throw, throw something out of the box and it's not that different you know it's just it feels like a lot more gun it feels like the dt it feels like the big boys gun and that's not going to suit everyone the forehand is slimmer but actually sort of takes up the same space in your hand more or less than that there's people that will prefer the beaver tail but they do are creating a trap version and i'm sure there will be a big fat forehand on that 
The grip, the grip wins my heart hands down. That just feels the hand lovely. It's a bit shy on the trigger for me. Move that forward and that would be absolutely spanking. That wide blade fits a harsh cheek weld. This is not gonna be a gun that you're gonna wanna take out and try and shoot instinctively. This is a pull, whack, proper committed gun. Plan out performance. And that's kind of the point. It's designed for people who shoot that way and generally can shoot. It's gonna be one of those guns that people refer to perhaps as too much gun, and I can I can appreciate that. I can appreciate that. But it wouldn't be too much gun for me. That's that's all I'm gonna say. I really like it. But I would say this one is very much more designed for competitive or more serious play shots. I said in the review that this doesn't make a huge difference, but actually mounting them side by side. It's a significantly less cluttered view, and both these are too short for me. I am very close, but it is actually extremely noticeable, just purely because of the way that this catches light with those traditional radiuses versus this convection. And it is absolutely fascinating that those bits actually make all of that difference. And yeah, it's different because I've got a light just there and the light is changing, but I play with them downstairs, I play with them in various lights, and I'm sure on a dull day, it probably wouldn't make that much difference. But it's not always dull in England. The 694 really does win my heart out of the two. Um, and purely because it takes a lot of things that I like in a gun, and they've made it into a gun. There's nothing wrong with the 692s, but I really, I'm into my bigger, heavier, more positive shooting guns for clay shooting. And this is what that is, a positive clay shooting gun. And I like that. It's not a sporter that can kind of do everything, it's a sporter that is designed for shooting sporting clays. And of course you can shoot everything else with it because it's a shotgun at the end of the day. You know, they are very simple two pairs of tubes as we've said many times, but it's a really nice two sets of tubes. I mean, price-wise, they, they're kind of built to compete with each other almost. They're only a few hundred quid different. I, I wouldn't buy a 692 personally if I wanted a clay shooting gun. If you want a gun that's probably a little bit better for all round shooting, buy the 692, buy some internal chokes, you can take it on clays and game and everything, and it's gonna just suit the guys who shoot slightly more instinctively. However, if you shoot less instinctively, if you're more calculated, if you are more, as I say, sort of on the ball, if you walk into a clay stand and have a plan and a set routine, buy a 694. If you walk into a clay stand and just shoot, and there's nothing wrong with that either, I'd probably say I'd buy a 692. For example, if I was buying a gun that I needed to do both Gala plays and game with, I'd probably still buy the 694 actually, but I would recommend the 692. I don't know. I'd love to know your thoughts for the guys who've seen them and had a play in a comparison. This is just my thoughts, mixed with some facts and figures, some weights and balances, and I hope you've seen that there is a significant improvement in the 694 that I'm sure will filter back to the 692 at some point. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Take care, goodbye. I'll see you next time.